There you are. There we go. <laughs> That's better. Sorry about all that. Hey, how are you? <laughs> oh, I'm doing good. It uh, ended up being a little bit frenetic today, uh, but I think we're finally after, what, 34 days getting rid of this cargo vehicle and all the science that it brought, and, uh, which has made us happy and thrilled and miserable at the same I time. Think I can imagine, but, you, you're, but looking, uh, you're looking well on it, Mike. Oh, thanks. You know, I, I, you can see maybe a little puppy face yeah. there that uh, most of us... Interestingly, uh, one of my crewmates almost has none, but uh, normally the rest of us sure do. So uh, I found a kind of a quiet place in the uh, Japanese model to, to chat with you here. It's looking pretty uh, pretty busy in there, even though it's a quiet section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. Let me turn the number around. Let's see. This is the Japanese module, and uh, they have their own airlock for science with an arm out there that kind of plucks the uh, payloads away once we put them in. And this is what the uh, the module looks like. And what's it, Mike? What's it like being up there for the um, you know for the nth time? You, is it uh, you? You said you're adapting more quickly than you do normally. Well, I mean, I've flown. This is the third flight, and uh, I'd say I adapted more quickly than the first two flights for sure. Uh, I mean, that's you, you kind of expect that. But the big unknown for me was that it had been like 13 years since I flew. So uh, after all that time, the body seems to remember. Either that or the, the cognitive strategies are there. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's worked out really well, actually. And you, you, sound like, um, you sound like you've been absolutely fanatic, not just, not just today, but, you know, for the whole mission. It just sounds like it's, it's been a constant. I think you were expecting a slightly slower ride, weren't you? Uh, not so much. We knew. Uh, in fact, they, they told us at a time that during this uh, docked period with the cargo vehicle, we were going to be very busy. Uh, and that's why we're here. You know, it's it's all about doing the science and operating the laboratory. And this vehicle is just full of science experiments that we had to do. Uh, uh, so, you know, it actually ended up probably better than what they warned us about. But a lot of late days, and uh, you know, occasionally the weekends and whatnot. Uh, the weekends are busy anyway with station maintenance and cleaning. So, yeah, we're we're ready for this uh, this little phase of our, our trip to end. Uh, but then we pick up with other things. We're, we're going to do a port relocate in a few days where we undock our Dragon from one forward port and we go around and redock to the uh, Zenith port, the top port where this cargo vehicle is right now. And all that's to make room for a visiting vehicle which comes on the 7th, the uh, Boeing Starliner. So uh, that'll be the first flight that we'll we'll be welcoming a couple of other crew members during that time. So when you so say yeah, it's, it's, Mike, when you say when you say move, how do you how do you move? How do you move the uh, the component the, the bits? Well, in this case, where we get in the same little spaceship that we came up here in the Dragon, the Crew Dragon, and then we we undock. We literally just pretend like we're leaving for good, except we're leaving just for a short time. We will undock. Uh, pull off about 200 meters and then do kind of a quarter of a circle and then uh, come and redock on top but you know we have to be full up in our suits and if things don't go well with the docking then we have to be ready to come home right away but uh, we expect this to go just fine and then we'll be back up here for another four and a half months now that's exactly what i thought you said but it seems to me that you're moving from one dock to another dock and you've got to do the whole going home procedure so why can't the capsule that's coming up dock in the dock that you're moving to? You know why? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, this is the first flight of the Boeing Starliner with people in it, uh, and uh, right now it's only tool for that that one forward hatch, the forward docking mechanism. So that's where it has to go. Perfect. Hey, I'm going to move a little bit because my my feet are cold down there on that end. <laughs> So, uh, hot air, ri hot, hot air rises in a vacuum. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, hot air doesn't rise because there's, there's no up or down. But, uh, but the, that, there's definitely thermoclines in here based on airflow and stuff. And if you have your feet under a metal handrail that happens to be cooled by air, it just conducts the heat out of your feet. So. Hey, so one thing I was going to ask you, get rolling back to what you said, how, how is it when you're so phonetic and you've got so much on your mind and you've got, you know, you've got a young, youngish crew with, or a youngish crew with you, how is it, how is it sleeping? How do you get to sleep? Well, so we, we, I'll, I'll show you this a little bit. We have our little crew quarters and each crew quarter has a private bunk, 
which is uh, really nice to have your own space. And, uh, you know, I, I go to bed, I, I sleep from about 11.30 till 6 a.m. every night, and it's, for the most part, uninterrupted. So it's it's pretty good. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I sleep pretty well. And most of us are on that schedule. A few might need a little extra sleep or are on a different, uh, slightly different sleep schedule. We all have to start at the same time every day. And that gives you incentive to get to bed, and it gives you incentive to get to sleep when you do get to bed. But since you brought it up, let me show you. Well, I'm I'm just See? wondering how you how you stop your mind spinning though with all the things going on around you and responsibilities and workload. Well, you you have to learn to do that. I think that's true with any expeditionary scenario. You uh, you have to take it very seriously, uh, but you have to take care of you also. Yeah. You know the way I I put it, especially to. Uh, to rookie crew members is that you have to remember at all times that you're on a $150 billion international asset, but you can't let it get to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easy, no doubt easier yep. said than done. So this, this, by the way, is my little uh, crew quarter. So there's my sleeping bag and uh, my little workstation. And, um, you know, when you close the doors on these, it's, it's pretty good. And so nobody interrupts you clearly unless there's an emergency. I'm actually just about to hydrate a bag of tea here, so I stuck some tea onto our hydration station. I'm dialing in the amount of water I need. All very English. Well, it's Chinese green tea, but otherwise... <laughs> hey, I've just discovered Chinese green tea, and I, re I drink it religiously now. Yeah, actually, I, I drank this a lot, uh, both of my other flights. Uh, it's actually quite good. And I drink it a lot at home over the last couple of decades as well. So it's very nice. And we, you know, um, we've talked about you know, food and menus before. So do you have to specifically request something like that, you know, one of your personal favorites? We, we get a chance to uh, make some personal requests out of the big inventory. Um, and it is a pretty big inventory. The variety is actually quite good. And then uh, we can actually ask for some personal things as well. So, you know, like you'll find, this is our galley table right here. Um, this is Nutella, Skippy peanut butter. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, we our silverware is all connected here by Velcro. So this is my spoon, titanium. Uh, yeah. These are stainless steel dragon chopsticks. Nice. They actually have a little dragon emblazoned on there's some things that are just better eaten with chopsticks up here um, and then uh, we have a a bunch of cases of uh, rehydratable food over here I mean we we have hundreds of kilograms of food on board that you rehydrate and uh, so we we're not going to go hungry for sure and uh, you know we recycle our our water the best we can so like a, of our urine about almost 90 percent of it is recycled to uh, potable drinking water and then we also uh, take some of that water and crack it into hydrogen and oxygen, and, and we breathe the oxygen. So uh, most of the oxygen we breathe comes from water we crack, and most of the water we drink comes from water that we, you know, recycle. As uh, Don Pettit puts it, we turn <laughs> yesterday's coffee into tomorrow's coffee. So uh, this is what we do. And will the uh, the Starliner tomorrow bring up um, more food and supplies as well? So and that will come on the 7th, and um, we don't expect it to bring much more than those two crew members being a test flight. It'll bring a little bit, but not more supplies. And right now, we're pretty pretty plush with supplies. And how, so, uh, how, no, much, you, how, much, how many days or weeks or months even of supplies have you got, Mike? Uh, for food and water, we, we could probably be up here for six or eight months. I'll tell you, Mark, we, we might lose satellite coverage again here real soon, so I'm going to fly you to a couple of points of interest real quick. Yeah, roger right that. Uh, well, this is the toilet. So. It seems strange because some of this stuff I've obviously seen when you've taken me around the, uh, the analog in uh, Houston. Yeah, well, <laughs> they're pretty good training mock-ups. Um, so they're they're very representative of what we have up here. Oh wow! I know where see, you I'm are now. Up to, yeah, up to the cupola now. It is sunrise, so uh, we don't quite see good land fun features yet. But uh, is, here you can kind of see outside. That is pretty cool. I can guarantee Beer and Devon will still be covered in, in cloud and rain, though. 
yes. That seems to be uh, my lot in life when I try to, to uh, get anything. I actually, uh, we did Bullseye London the other day, and, and uh, unfortunately it was a little bit hazy. I, uh, I was chatting with Kevin Fong yesterday and trying to get him to do something, please, about the weather, and he's just not been able to come through quite yet. And Mike, I don't know whether it was you putting no. putting strings, but the um the, the local schools in the Devon area got to speak to Matt last week, um, which was amazing. Uh, so it was either you or somebody they recognised <laughs> put two and two together. They, they put two and two together. I think it was it was probably because uh, I had done an interview down there and they knew it. And and Matt is great on PRs, and uh, you know I've been trying to trying to push my other crewmates into. Um, into some of these PRs, uh, just again, I think we we might lose satellite here in a little bit. So it, it's not because I'm being antisocial, uh, but we we depend on those satellites for all of our comm and all of our data downlink. Yeah, and mostly. So the sun sunrise when you when you first went up there, what's happening now? Uh it we are about to go over Washington State, I think. Which reminds me, I may want to take some pictures of my my uh, homeland <laughs> if we uh, get there. Uh, and it looked like it might be a little clear, but I'm not sure. We actually have a, um, a world map program that runs that kind of tells us where things are. But we don't have that going right now because we are fully configured to monitor this spaceship as it leaves. But uh, that's about where I think we are. And Mike, you've got so, a couple um, of um, yeah. spacewalks coming up. Is that that you're still tasked to do those? Is that correct? That's correct. In June, we'll have, have uh, three spacewalks. Two of which I'll be on, and uh, the one that I'm not on, I'll be running the robotic arm. Actually, from here, these are our. This is our robotic workstation right here, and so using these controls. We, uh, we fly around the robotic arm, and I'll have uh, a person on there. Yep, here we are. We're indeed over the Pacific Northwest, and indeed it is cloudy. But you can see mountains up there. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no worries. Oh, that looks amazing. It's just, oh, God, it's surreal, isn't it? Well, it's not surreal to you because you're there, yep. but it's uh, just amazing. Oh, it, it is always surreal. It never gets old. I mean, it's it's just mesmerizing to be looking out this window. Yeah, uh, absolutely, no question. About it. it must have been quite incredible so, to see the solar eclipse from your angle. I saw the pictures. We used the pictures, so thank you for sharing those. Oh, great! We um, we most of us, uh, well, all of us were up here. Four of us uh, from the U.S. side were right here in the cupola, and we were watching the shadow of the eclipse move over eastern Canada. And it's just this big black menacing shadow that moves you know it can move de you know depending on where it is on, on the earth at the at the time between several hundred and over a thousand miles an hour but we're going seventeen thousand miles an hour so we overtook it and flew over it and uh we could just see it move i'll tell you i will have to uh, drop pretty quick here to move on to my next scheduled activity but you had asked about the spacewalks and since i came down here to sip my tea i'll just show you this is our airlock and so uh this is where we keep our suits, uh, and eventually we'll we'll clear all of these bags out of there and the other suits and go out that way. But uh, in general, this is what our our space suits look like. I think See. it's it's after the copula. I think that's almost the coolest room on the space station. It's a pretty nifty place. Um, a lot happens here, and you know, as I was saying, when you. Uh, when you need to be really sharp and on your procedures, this is probably the place where that matters the most. Let's see. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. This is a, it's our sun shield, actually. And um, how's, the, how's the science been going, Mike, before, we, before the signal drops? Science has been going well. Um, we... We always expect a little bit of an attrition rate, but actually we've, we've done really well. Our, uh, our experiments have done, for the most part, very successfully. And a lot of it is, you know, you're, you're trying to dis do discovery science, so you really don't know what your results are gonna be. And so sometimes we're trying to grow, for instance, cultures of bacteria that are antibiotic resistant, and we will swab various parts of our station to see 
what grows and what doesn't grow. So we, we don't know when something's going to grow or not. So uh, a positive or a negative result is still a result. But then we will take those positive results and then we'll, we'll crush them up and do basically metagenomic analysis on their DNA, which we could do up here, which is really quite amazing. So, uh, you know, science like that, uh, we've done a lot of material science and we've done a lot of uh, biochemistry and um, 3D printing of organs, yeah. uh, which is also pretty good, pretty cool. So all of that is actually done quite well. And uh, we've also also had 40 mice in residence, and um, we've kept good care of them. And they're, uh, some are a little different from others, and we've exposed them to space, and we're sending them back down all in good condition as well. Um, and uh, a lot of microscopy, a lot of material science, and uh, a lot of science on us. <laughs> so a lot of our blood samples and urine and uh, saliva and other body fluids are also in deep freeze and, and on that drag and throw home. Um, so uh, all that's gone pretty well. Probably. It sounds like you've been working. It sounds like you've been working incredibly frenetically. But do you swab the outside of the space station as well for um, bacteria? That's a really insightful question because we're actually uh, we're doing that on our next TVA. I'm I'm not the one doing it, unfortunately. Even though I worked out some of the procedures, but uh, uh, Matt Dominic and Tracy Caldwell Dyson will be going out and doing just that. And our Russian colleagues just in EVA this last Thursday. And they did that as well. Uh, and it, it, we're doing it partly because we have found that things can grow in what we thought was an ingrowable place that just exposed to uh, surfaces on the outside. So uh, we will be looking at that really soon. How, it's very exciting. And how, um, you know, given you, you're taking swabs in a vacuum, you're bringing them back into something that isn't um, a vacuum. What's happening to the bacteria when you bring them back into the space station? Well, they go in special canisters. They're, they're not just your basic swab. Yeah. They're a swab that comes out of a canister and goes back into that and seals. Uh, so when they get to the ground, they, they will be in that condition. Well, you have to keep us up to date about um, what comes out of all that, that science. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh, there's, there's so much. Yeah. And we're, we're really looking forward to um, seeing you in November, obviously, in Edinburgh and hearing, you know, all, all about this in, in a lot more detail on, on you know, in, in, in person. So we're not reliant on a, a SATCOM link. Yeah, well, me too. Uh, and like I said, I will have to drop off, but uh, we'll definitely be chatting, uh, I believe, in June. In June, uh, with, indeed. With the, uh, right. So I'll be looking forward to that. And uh, the, the pace should be a little bit more regular. Uh, during that time so we're looking forward although we'll be getting ready for our EVAs and um, really looking forward to that well Mike, I know you I can see that you need to go so it's been really I mean it's been amazing talking to you actually it's, it's and, and, and really nice to see you looking so happy and you know in your in your in your element yeah, yeah. I, I, I love being here no question about I it can, I yeah. can I can see why but and if you get we if, if we get the chance to talk before June then um, and you have a spare moment then you know, be, be delightful to, to do so again i just want to say i'm really looking forward to tying into the space module at the university of exeter you know my, my passion is the human in space and and medicine in space and uh what better place to talk about medicine in space than in space at the international station all right sir i need to go um i will talk to you soon but we'll be in email contact yeah and thank you for thanks for the time to mike today mike i really appreciate it, it was really yeah, a, a joy chatting to you